Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariungi. Today we continue with our topic on introduction to chemistry. And uh, today we are going to discuss the sources of heat in the laboratory. So heat is a very important uh, a requirement in the chemistry laboratory and this is because uh, there are many reactions that need heat for them to take place. It is therefore important that uh, we understand uh, what are some of the sources of heat uh, that we can get as far as the chemistry laboratory is concerned. So the following are the heating apparatus that can be used in the laboratory. We have uh, the most common, which is the Burns and Burner. And this is the most common heating apparatus that we have in the chemistry laboratory. We also have portable burners, also known as the gas stoves. So these ones are mainly used uh, where the experiment can be moved from one point to the other. It can be moved maybe even from the lab to outside the lab because they have their own gas uh, cylinders and therefore they can be portable. Uh, also, we have spirit lamps. There are lamps that use spirit. They can also be used uh, for heating. Uh, we can also use uh, candles. Although they do not produce uh, much heat. But basically the first two are the most commonly used uh, heating apparatus. Especially uh, the burns and burner. Uh, the portable burners, they have the same uh, setup, more or less, as the burns and burner, but uh, they carry their own gas cylinder, and therefore they are portable from one point to another. So we are going to discuss the burns and burner. Uh, which is the most common. And we're going to have a diagram. So we have a Burns and Burner that has been uh, dissembled. Uh, we have uh, the following. We have a chimney. We will look at the function. Uh, we have a collar that has an air hole. We have the jet. We have the gas inlet. And then finally we have the base. So those are the parts that make a, a dissembled Burns and burner.
So if that Bunsen burner is uh, assembled, we have the following. So basically the chimney is as indicated there. We have the collar, the air hole. The jet cannot be seen once it is assembled because it is inside. And then we have the gas inlet that has the gas tubing. And the tube that brings in the gas. And then finally, we have the base. So we have A is a disassembled burns and burner, while B is an assembled burns and burner. So next we are going to look at uh, the parts of the buns and burner and their functions. So on those parts We'll start with uh, the chimney or the barrel. And this is the top part. And this is the part that allows air that has gotten in through the air hole and the gas that has come through the gas inlet, then through the jet to mix so that they can form the flame at the top. So allows air and gas to mix so as to form a flame at the top. So the, the flame is usually formed at the tip or at the top, at the top of the chimney. That's where the flame is usually formed. Then we have uh, the collar, uh, this is a ring that is turned to control the amount of air getting in. To the chimney. So it's a ring that is turned to control how much air is getting in uh, to the chimney. Of course on the same we have the air hole is for letting in air into the buns and burner. Then for, uh, we have uh, the jet. This one regulates the amount of gas. Getting into the chimney. And 
and then we have the gas inlet supplies the gas from the source. into the burns and burner. So the, the inlet uh, supplies the gas into the burns and burner, whereas the gas tubing, this one connects the burns and burner To the source of the gas. For example, the gas cylinder is the source of the gas in this case. So the uh, gas tubing is the one that connects the burns and burner with the source of the gas. The gas inlet is the one that supplies the gas into the burns and burner. And then finally, we have the base. This is actually the one that supports uh, the burns and burner on the bench. So basically, uh, we have those uh, parts of the burns and burner. We have the chimney, we have the collar. The collar has an air hole that lets in air. The collar can be turned either to open the air hole or to close it. Uh, the gas inlet regulates how much gas is getting into the chimney. Then we have a gas inlet that allows the gas to get into the burns and burner. We have a base that uh, supports the burns and burner on the bench. And then we have the gas uh, tubing uh, that connects the burns and burner and the source of the gas. So we are going to have uh, an assignment. So the assignment, as indicated, the first question, draw a well-labeled diagram of a burns and burner. Question number two, state the function of the following parts of a burns and burner. A, collar. A, B, jet. C, gas inlet. And lastly, D, chimney. So we'll stop there and continue next time. See you then.